Key Math 43 had a question coming out of chapter 5, number 76, and here we were given information about a random set of folks who went on a weight loss program, and it says that the uh, weight loss was uniformly distributed and they lost between 6 and 15 pounds that month. So when they say define um, random variable X, well, we have a continuous numerical variable, right, because we measure weight. And technically, if I want to get super into this, I would say that the units of this numerical variable are pounds. We were told it was uniformly distributed, so I have the U. And then the two numbers we always put are the spread, right? It went from 6 to 15 pounds. And my A was 16, that's our min, and our B was 15, that's our max. And that's how we always line up our graph. So if you look over here on my sketch of the PDF, there's my base. All right, now if I look at the length of my base, my base, you find the range every time. So 15 minus six is gonna give us nine. And then the height is always that reciprocal. And that's, that's how you set up every uniform distribution. Again, I'll say for the base, it's always the range. So it's just high minus low, that stat that we learned about way back in chapter two. And then just taking note at how I labeled this, you see I've got my x on the x-axis and I've got probabilities on the y. It's the closest we get to what we did in chapter four when we made these PDFs, but they were tables, right? This is still a PDF down here. This is a PDF. Um, they're both PDFs, but again, for discrete numerical up here, continuous numerical down here. But remember, we put the sample space in the top row of our table, our PDF table, and probabilities on the bottom row. Well, here we put our sample space on the x-axis and our probabilities on the y-axis. All right, I'm going to delete most of this just so we have a clean slate moving forward. All right, I can get rid of that also. Okay, so we've got parts A and B taken care of. Um, and then C, it looks like, oh, it actually said graph the PDF. So we did A, B, and C, and I, I mentioned that you can skip part D. If you've done enough algebra and you've de dealt with piecewise functions, that's technically the piecewise function that, that regulates this graph. If you're like, dude, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, then ignore it. Don't worry about part D. In terms of the mean and the standard deviation, we have these formulas, right? A plus B over two for the mean and the square root of b minus a quantity squared over 12 for the standard deviation. And just take note that, yeah, I got the numbers, but I'm also putting the units on, right? Because anytime we have a numerical variable, we've got units, and every statistic has the same units as our variable. All right, so for part G, we're getting into probability. So before I show the work on part G, I just wanna mention, anytime you hear probability, right, that's gonna be area under a curve, all right? And and I'm gonna put curve in quotes right now, only because our curve is a rectangle. And if I look at the phrasing in part G, it says, what's the probability that an individual lost more than 10 pounds in a month? Well, I think 10 is somewhere over here. That's about it, right? So if I actually, JK, now that I look at the mean, if the mean is 10.5, 10 a little bit below it. So actually, let me let me go here. I I, I stand corrected. I think 10 is somewhere around here. And when I shade that area, and I because it said more than, I'm going to shade to the right, that looks like it's a little bit more than 50%. And what I, why I think it's good to always draw a graph first, and you'll see me emphasize sketching a picture, is because it's good to get an idea of what your answer should be. So when I find this probability number, I should get a decimal that's larger than 50%, right? Or at least close to 50%. It shouldn't be 10% shouldn't be 90%, it should be somewhere in that middle of that range between zero and 100%. All right, because we're on a rectangle, if we wanna talk about area, we're always gonna go base times height. So if I'm going greater than 10, then I wanna look at that base, I can see my base here is gonna be 15 minus 10 because it's the range of the shaded area. And the height is always the uniform height number. So that's what I'm gonna be crunching in part G, and that's what you see me doing, and I've shaded it as well, and sure enough, I do get an answer a little bit larger than 50%. And I should, because if 10.5 is the mean here, then there should be 50%, because it's the 50th percentile, it's the median, right? So there should be 50% on the left, 50% on the right. That's why I knew that my number should have been a little bit larger than 50%. All right, so for part H, it says, um, suppose it's known that an individual lost more than 10 pounds. So what they're saying is this already happened. That is the condition. 
and then find the probability that they lost less than 12 pounds. So we actually, given that we know it was 10 or higher, what's the probability it was between 10 and 12? That's what they're asking us to find. And that's what you'll see my work start to play out here. So let me scooch this up so we can see this. All right. So again, I have a conditional probability. Given that this person lost less than, oops, excuse me, I'm saying that wrong. Here's the given, it's on this side. Given that this person lost more than 10 pounds, what's the probability that they lost less than 12 pounds in a month? All right, so if I wanna play this out, right? We knew from chapter three, the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So then I have to figure out well, what does this mean? Right? And and means overlap. So if I want to draw these two inequalities, and you'll see them graphed out down here, if I have x is less than 12, I start at 12 and I head on down. And if I have x greater than 10, I start at 10 and head on up. Okay, great. Now we have to see where they overlap. So let's see where that overlap occurs. And as I go through this, not overlapping here, it's not overlapping here, but you can see those two regions, sure enough, they overlap in between 10 and 12, and that's what my numerator is gonna turn into. All right, so the overlap between somebody losing less than 12 pounds and losing at least 10 pounds is they lost somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds. And then don't forget that we have our probability down here. Now, I'm gonna just sketch our graph real quick, because keep in mind, when we were doing this, they lost somewhere between six and 15 pounds, right? This was our PDF. I know it's not the best drawing I've done, but I've got this happening. Now, if I want somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds, right, I'll go from 10 to 12 on my x-axis, and I'll go ahead and I'll just shade that in real quick. And if I want that area, right, if I want this base, well, that base is 12 minus 10, which is 2. Whoops, excuse me. All right, so for the base, you see 12 minus 10. Now, the height... The height's always 1 ninth, that's why you see it right here at 1 ninth. So there's my numerator. Now for my denominator, let me go ahead and change the color on this just so we can see it. Why don't we go with, we'll go pink. If I want x is greater than 10, I'm gonna start at 10 this time, right? But now I'm gonna shade all the way up. So it's gonna be this entire thing. And my new base that I'm worried about is gonna be from 10 to 15. So the base there, when I wanna find its numerical value, we go 15 minus 10, which is five, right? And then the height again, one ninth. Okay, so these cancel out, that leaves me with two fifths and that probability winds up being 40%. So that's how we do that one. And then the same thing is about to play out for part I. And it's got an uglier looking condition, I'm not gonna deny that, but it's the same idea. So we say, well, if you know that you lose at least nine pounds, what's the likelihood you lost between seven and 13 pounds? So here I am looking for the overlap, right? Here's X greater than nine. Here's X between seven and 13. And you can see that they overlap between nine and 13. And that is what my numerator turns into. And then if I'm looking at this again, if I think about, well, here's my PDF from six to 15, right? My height is one ninth and I wanna go, and I'll highlight this again. I'll try and stay consistent. We'll go nine to 13, right? So if I wanna go nine to 13, we're gonna go nine, 13, and we're gonna look at that area under the curve. Well, that base, that base is 13 minus nine. The height is one ninth. All right, now let's try the other one. Let's do the denominator. I need X greater than nine. Okay, so I'm gonna go to X being greater than nine. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go all the way up. So what's my base this time out? This time it's 15 minus nine, and that's what you see here, height is still one ninth. But again, those heights always cancel. It winds up just being two thirds when you're done with it, and you have about a 67% chance. All right, so there is number 76. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.